All praises to the Most High, the great I Am loving kindness. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Sister Chantel. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about tithes and offerings, the Most High's portion, as well as the wheat and the tares. We know that tithe and offering is the Most High's portion, so we're going to read and get some clarification on what it is that He requires us to do with His portion. We're also going to be learning about the wheat and the tares. Okay, family, we're going to start in Matthew 25, 31 through 46. And we're going to get a better understanding on the wheat and the tares and the difference between the two. And Isaiah 28 and 10 tells us how we should read the word. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little so family we're going to start off with the prayer and then we're going to jump right into the lesson heavenly father in the name of your only begotten son yashaya hamashiach and your precious and pure holy spirit while we walk with Daj, we come before thee today in humbleness and in thankfulness for your word heavenly father we ask that you will bless us to have heart and ears to hear your word Bless you will forgive us of our sins of omission and commission, things remembered and things forgotten, and all unclean things done in your sight. Help us, Heavenly Father, to obtain the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so that we may do the things that please you, Heavenly Father. All praises unto you. Bahaya, Bahashem, Yashaya, Mashiach, Aman. Matthew 25, 31 46. When Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them from one another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set his sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then the righteous answered him, saying, When saw we thee, and hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels for i was in hunger and ye gave me no meat i was thirsty and ye gave me no drink i was a stranger and ye took me not in Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, he did it not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So, brothers and sisters, we can clearly see and understand that from reading these scriptures, we can see what differentiates the wheat from the tares. The wheat were ministering to the poor and underprivileged and the tares were not. 
So brothers and sisters, after having read Matthew 25, 31 through 46, we get an understanding of how the wheat is separated from the tares. So it's very imperative that we look into ourselves and see any kind of way that we could be of assistance to those less fortunate. This does not always mean with money because sometimes we may not be able to assist with funds but there are other ways that we could help such as servitude, running errands for someone who is disabled, volunteering some time at a nursing home and when funds allow it could go into a Dollar General, Family Dollar, Dollar Tree, wherever you may want to go and put together some bags filled with essential items and distribute those bags to the needy. Whatever the Most High leads you to do. You see, brothers and sisters, the tares were not busy with the poor and underprivileged. That's why Yasha is said to them in Matthew 25 over in verse 41 then shall he say also unto them on the left depart from me be cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels for i was hungered and ye gave me no meat i was thirsty and he gave me no drink i was a stranger and he took me not in naked and he clothed me not sick and in prison and he visited me not and as children of the Father, the Most High Living God, we want to be part of the wheat. We have to have these works. Remember, beloved, 1 Peter 4 and 8. And above all things, have fervent charity amongst yourselves, for charity covered a multitude of sins. So, those who are considered the tares were just going about their business all enveloped within the beast system trying to live lives of luxury and comfort and just focus on self if we want to be harvested with the wheat we have to have these works okay family let's travel over to matthew 7 Verse 21 to 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Those are the tares. They were not doing the will of the Father. We have to follow the example of Christ, what he did when he was here in the earth. Yahshua fed the hungry, clothed the naked, healed the sick, visited those in prison, and many, many other works. Let's go over to Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Yahshua said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love the thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets so yashaya our brother and redeemer loved our father with all his heart with all his soul and with all his mind and he showed his father this love by following the second commandment thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself also, brothers and sisters, we have to pray for holy wisdom while we're laboring in the vineyard. There may be times when you see someone and you may figure you want to help them, but 
the Holy Spirit will not lead you to help that person. It's for a reason. We know that it's not safe to approach everyone. You have to move by the Spirit of the Most High Living God. Let the Holy Spirit work within you and minister to you and lead you to those whom the Heavenly Father will have you to minister unto. While here within our second estate, we are in our probationary period. The earth is our training ground. We're supposed to be training here, going through trials and tribulations, tried and tested. We have to train and develop ourselves to get ready to go into that new Zion. And in that new Zion, everyone is going to be helping one another. No one there is going to be just for self. So right now we're training. We have to go through the trials and tribulations so that our spirits become stronger. We become wiser and we learn what is required of us so that we may earn our rightful positions within the kingdom of the Most High. And don't forget, Christ went through trials and tribulations. Therefore, we are not exempt. Moving on to Matthew 13 and 36. Then Yahshua sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that soweth them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be welling and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father who had ears to hear let him hear so beloved we have to understand right here in Matthew 13 let's go down to 41 the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. What are the things that offend? Let's travel over to Galatians 5, 13-26. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That part right there takes us back to Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Where Yeshua is talking about clothing the naked and feeding the hungry. Let me carry on. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take ye that ye be not consumed of one another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who are considered the tares have been operating within the works of the flesh so we have to introspect and search within ourselves check to see if we are operating within these works of the flesh 
and whatever we find if you should find something we have to repent of that thing and ask the most high to deliver us from it and if any of us are dealing with unforgiveness we need to ask the most high to help us work that thing out so that we can forgive we have to forgive so that our father in heaven will forgive us while here in this earth on probation on the training ground on the battlefield we have to overcome the works of the flesh and start operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit we have to prepare to live within the new Jerusalem because the works of the flesh will not be allowed there but you know what will be allowed let's read Galatians 5 22 to 23 and find out but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law so we have to ask the Heavenly Father to help us to to obtain the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we can start operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and we have to pray in the mighty name of Yeshua Mashiach by the power of the Most High Living God and the precious and pure Holy Spirit we have to rebuke and renounce these demonic spirits of the works of the flesh that attaches themselves to us we have to purge these unclean spirits out of the temple of the most high living God first Corinthians 6 and 19 know ye not that ye are the temple of God those who are operating within the works of the flesh are the tares family this is serious choose ye aside choose ye aside there's only two paths to take to the right or to the left and if you don't choose the right and you're just going to sit in neutral then by default you've already chosen the left if you're straddling the fence by default you've already chosen the left so we have to take our salvation seriously because if we are operating within the works of the flesh then we will be harvested with the tares and let's keep in mind that those who are harvested amongst the wheat are those who were doing the works listed in Matthew 25 35 through 40 and operating within the gifts of the Holy Spirit so beloved brothers and sisters we have to pray to the Most High Heavenly Father and ask him to help us to operate more so within the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we can become more Christ-like and so that we may be harvested amongst the wheat I want to read to you from the Gospel of the Kai Lady chapter 22 it was formerly called the book of illuminators having the authority of the Nazarenes you can find this book online if you would just type in the gospel of the Kai Lady PDF that's K-A-I-L-E-D-Y listen to this chapter 22 I've scrolled down like towards the almost like the middle okay it says another priest said tell us about the spirit and Yeshua said a venter asking for wine does mine so much excel yours then he continued men understand the things wherein they place their hearts if it be in worldliness they know worldly things but if it be in spirituality they know the things of the spirit he who is ever watchful of the wind never sows and he who fixes his eye on the clouds never reaps the wind blows where it will and though recognizing its sound no man knows from whence it comes or whither it goes for the best advice on worldly matters 
I will go to a worldly wise man, but I am a spiritually wise man. Therefore, cannot you take notice when I talk of things I know that I gain nothing from my teachings is obvious, but my clothes and manner of life bear witness to this. Nearby a rich man standing stood listening, and now he said, Have you never bought a tree for silver, and having worked it, sold the product of your hands for gold? If a man had seed, should he let it rot? Is it not better to plant the seed so it yields an increase, and is not the sower entitled to this? Yahshua said, The laborer is worthy of his hire, and he who sows is entitled to reap the increase. But remember, the seed, it requires rain and sun, and the soil must give up its goodness. These things come from God as gifts to man. Why then should man deny God's participation? God says, As my share is above my needs, give it to my little ones. And should not the sower do the same? Therefore I say, He who fails to support the underprivileged in obedience to God's wishes defrauds God of his rightful due. For cannot even an earthly partner decree what shall be done with the profit from his participation. I assure you, no man has ever yet made a profit wholly through his own efforts, and fraud perpetrated on the divine partner will not be overlooked. Brothers and sisters, did you just hear what I read? Did you understand that? Let's stop right there for a moment. So that we can reflect on what we just read. This is clearly saying that it is our Heavenly Father who is our divine partner. He gives us the increase. He gives us the health and the strength, the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge of how to obtain the increase. Therefore, He wants us to take His rightful portion that He contributed to helping us obtain the increase and distribute it to the underprivileged. We are not to defraud the Most High Creator of the portion that He is due for helping you to obtain that increase. He's saying, give my portion to the needy, to the underprivileged. He didn't say, give my portion to the pastors within the Christian churches. So let's reflect on 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Brothers and sisters, that verse right there, since the Most High has placed his temple within his people, then we are the church. So when you sow your seeds into feeding the hungry, helping those in need, Helping the underprivileged, you are obediently sowing your tithe and your offering into the true church of the Most High Living God. And in turn, we will be being obedient to what the Most High God says He wants us to do with His portion. We will find out that the Most High has a balance of moderation according to the ways in which we give. And it's not solely about giving money because there are times when we just don't have it to give. But there are other ways in which we can help. It's about how we can help. Loving thy neighbor as thyself. Such as offering a silent prayer for a brother or sister. Or if the Most High leads you, you can go and pray with that person personally. Let's continue reading. Therefore, I say, he who fails to support the underprivileged in obedience to God's wishes defrauds God of his rightful due for what he has done. For cannot even an earthly partner decree what shall be done with the profit from his participation? I assure you, no man has ever yet made a profit wholly through his own efforts, and fraud perpetrated on the divine partner will not be overlooked. The rich man said, Your words sound well, 
But the holy books say the ass is loaded according to its strength. The more I give in charity, the more I am harried by beggars. Even if I gave all I have, it would fail to satisfy. And Yahshua said, If your wealth is so burdensome, then sell all you have and give the proceeds to good causes. It is not wholly good to give to charity. For this is like cutting the thorn weed, which quickly springs up again from the root. It is more worthy to dig up the root of poverty. The rich man said, Having my responsibilities and a large household, I am caught between the milestones. For is it not said in the books of wisdom, No man should disregard his responsibilities. Yahshua is said, The law brings all things to a balance of moderation. Does it not say it is sufficient to feed and clothe the women folk modestly, caring for their needs, but ensuring they are not spoiled by idleness? It suffices to provide your sons with learning and skill, and your daughters with their dowries. There is nothing more you can give them, for above this you harm them with luxury. A poor man cannot spoil his family with overindulgence, but precautions against this are not the least of the rich man's burden. So you see, brothers and sisters, it's about the balance of moderation. You give what you can, help where you can help, pray where you can pray, give time where you can give time. You can sow into someone's life by giving them words of encouragement and just that encouragement can have a remarkable impact on their lives treating those how we want to be treated love thy neighbor as thyself a while back i was at an artist convention i was there doing a show and i heard this lady i was sitting near her and i heard her speaking to someone over the phone and you can tell that this person that she was speaking to was going through something because she was speaking the most encouraging words to this person. I mean, she was really ministering to this person and uplifting them and encouraging them. And it touched my heart so much that I was like, oh my gosh, I have to give her something. Um, so I, I gave her a pair of the earrings that I had made. And... That was in 2010, and in 2018, I found out that she worked at the same job as I had, you know, was working at, and she transferred over to my station, and I saw her again. I hadn't seen her since 2010, and we became prayer warriors together, you know, and today she's a good, very good friend of mine. I consider her as a sister, so just... That, those words of encouragement that you can give someone, you'll be surprised how you've touched them and how you can change, help them to change their lives by ministering to them in that way. And that's sowing, that's sowing into someone's life. So loving thy neighbor as thyself is what we have to become more inclined to doing if we want to be harvested with the wheat and not the tares. We have to learn to follow the example of Christ. When he was here, this is what he did. He possessed all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He fed the hungry, clothed the naked, healed the sick, visited those in prison, and everything else I read from Matthew 25, 31 and 46. So we, as children of the light, children of the Most High Living God, we have to you know, start learning and equipping ourselves with the gifts of the Holy Spirit in moving the way Christ moved when he was in this earth because he is our example. Okay, brothers and sisters, we're nearing the end of this lesson, but I want to take you to the sealed portion, the final testament of Jesus Christ. And you can find this book in PDF form as well. Just type in the title and put PDF after it and you should have no problem finding it. I'm going to be reading to you from chapter 46. I'm going to start at verse 13 so that we could add more on to what we've learned. 
you have to have three or more witnesses. We're going to go into chapter 46, and I've decided to read verse 1 through 16, instead of just starting at verse 13, so that we can get a clearer understanding of what is required of us and what Christ was trying to explain to the people. So let's sit back and may the Heavenly Father bless us to have heart and ears to hear His word in the name of Christ Yeshua and His precious and pure Holy Spirit. Chapter 46, verse 1 And it came to pass that the time of the age of His ministry arrived, and Yahshua went forth among the people and began to teach them after he had been baptized by John the Baptist. And the men whom he had chosen to be his apostles were men who were not accepted by the church at Jerusalem as being righteous men. For each of them had in some way alienated himself from the church of the Jews. Now it was this church that sought to silence Jesus and keep him from preaching against the words and commandments of the church that were given unto the people by the high priest. For the people were taught that the church was the only true church of God upon the earth, and that the Jews were an holy and peculiar people who were the only ones who had been blessed with the truth. And the laws of salvation were taught unto the people according to the precepts of the leaders of the church. And these leaders told the people that God would not give any new revelation unto the world except it be given through the leadership of the church at Jerusalem. And the people were taught that the Lord would not allow them to be misled by the leaders of the church, and that if there was something that the Lord wanted to tell the people, then he would only tell them through the established lines of ecclesiastical authority that were established in the church. Now this was the main thing that Jesus spoke against, yea, in many things did he speak against the church and its leaders, because they had corrupted the word of God and taught for the doctrine the commandments of men, denying the power of the Father to teach his own children, but believing that the Father had given all his power and authority unto men. But Jesus taught the people that they were all children of God, and that they did not need a church or leaders to go unto the Father and receive from him any instructions that he might have for them. And Yahshua began to usurp, as the leaders of the church suppose, the authority of the leaders of the church by teaching these things to the people. And he taught the people that the ordinances and doctrines of the church would not save them, but that the only way that they could be saved was by keeping the commandments of the Father which he was commanded to give unto them. And he taught the people that he had been sent by the Father to give unto them these commandments, and that only by way of these commandments could they be saved. And these commandments were not the commandments of the church, for the church required things of the people which were not commandments of God, but were the commandments of men. And Yahshua taught the people that the synagogues and temples that were built among them were useless in the purpose for which they believed that they were created, even that they were houses of God. For he taught them that the Father would never reside in a house built by the hands of men, but that he dwelt in the hearts and minds of each of his children, according to the power of his Spirit, which was the Holy Spirit. And many of the things that Yahshua taught to the people were hard for them to accept, Yea, none of the things he taught unto them were hard to understand, but they were hard to accept, for the people were so entrenched in their traditions and in their customs that they could not accept that a man who was not set apart and ordained by the leadership of the church could teach them the things of God. And Yahshua began to teach the people that they should not support the church and its wickedness by the payment of tithes and offerings, but that they should give that which they could afford to the poor and those who have less than they do. And Yahshua condemned the rich and also the leaders of the church for the luxurious lifestyles 
that they lived, having received these things because of that which the people gave unto the church. Remember earlier, brothers and sisters, when Yahshua was explaining to the rich man, the law brings all things to a balance of moderation. So we understand, brothers and sisters, that the Most High, our Heavenly Father, does not put stress and strain on us. He says simply, there is a law of balance and moderation. We give from that portion which He has allowed us to have. We give from the heart. There are many ways to sow into someone's life. We can sow in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and financially. Now let's go over the definitions of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes we have an idea of what the definition is in our minds, but we need a little bit more. Love. Love means showing love to others as Yeshaya loved us. Joy. Joy is a deep sense of happiness that comes from Yahshua. We can have joy in our lives no matter what the circumstances are. Peace is a sense of calm. We can have peace in our hearts and in our minds because we know that the Most High Living God, our Heavenly Father, is in control of all things going on in our lives. Long suffering means to bear our burdens and to help others during difficult times. Kindness is treating others with the same respect we want for ourselves. We can be kind with our words or actions to others. Goodness is to have moral purity or virtue in all we do. We can strive to be Christ like. And act as Yeshua would. Faithfulness is being honorable and keeping our word to others and being true to the Most High Living God, our Father. Gentleness is being soft spoken, meek, and humble. Self control means to be in control of our emotions and acting in control with our words and actions. So beloved brothers and sisters, let us put into practice what we've learned and go forth in the mighty name of Yeshua Mashiach. As I bring this message to a close, I would like to give all honor, respect, and love unto our Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son, Yeshua Mashiach, and His precious and pure Holy Spirit, Ruach Kodash. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your words of wisdom and instruction. We thank you for blessing us to be hearers as well as doers of your word. And help us to obtain and put into practice the gifts of the Holy Spirit and to reject and rebuke and renounce the works of the flesh out of our lives. Bahaya Bahashem Ya Shaya Mashiach while we walk with Dash, Aman. Listen, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. Truth and clarity read, but the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness. Meekness, temperance.